All right, well, we've covered all the exciting stuff of learning how it works. Now we're just writing the stupid notes. Uh, these are specific to the Bendix PS5. Bendix, that's a small one, or Bendix Stromberg, uh, PS5. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So we'll be looking at that picture. PS5, we have the chambers. A, which is impact. And also inside, or impact pressure if you want. Also inside A, we have a spring. spring, which does what? Holds the poppet open, holds the poppet open during idle. And why do we need a spring to hold it open for idle? Well, why wouldn't it work? Because there's not sufficient impact force option. There's not enough impact um, air. air, which and there's not enough venturi, which is air, air metering force. There's not enough air metering force. All right, so B is venturi pressure or suction. I like to call it suction. I think it makes more sense. <clears throat> um, and we know that A plus B equals Air metering force. All right. Um, one, two, three. Fuel enters E, which I don't think it labeled it as E on here. It does not. But I called it. I called it that. And I also said purple. Purple. And we'll say it's at 9 to 14 PSI. What's, what's delivering the 9 to 14 PSI? Fuel pump. Fuel pump. What kind of fuel pump? Boost pump. Can't be a boost pump. Boost pump starts in the tank. And you always have two pumps. So, but you are correct, actually. Because when the engine's not running, it is the boost pump. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if the engine is running, it is the... He knew that. I just lost. It's the what? Constant displacement pump is what I heard? Yes, rotary pump. <clears throat> and if the pressure was 16 PSI, what would we do? Adjust the relief valve. Which way would we turn it? Out. Out. All right, see? Anti-clockwise. Anti Got to put it all together. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, Okay. Um, so then D is, well, in this case, it's fuel metering force. Because C is not touching a diaphragm, so it doesn't have um, any play in this. So fuel metering force equal to air metering force. And then we move on out of those chambers. This isn't really a chamber, but it's there. C, which is metered fuel. Metered fuel. And the operation, which is kind of running through how it works. Operation fuel enters. Fuel enters. Which chamber? Echo purple and flows to D um, either because what are the two things that so it has to go past the poppet valve fuel enters E and flows I could put that past poppet <coughs> past poppet to D so either because of idle spring or what the air AMF air metering force either the spring is holding it off idle 
and it's in idle, or we've gone past idle, and the air metering force has opened it up even more. Uh, fuel flows from D past metering jet. We'll look at the picture. Fuel flows past from D past the metering jet to the idle needle. Whoosh, over here to the idle needle valve. To fuel flows. from D, past metering jet, past metering jet, past metering jet, to idle needle valve, to idle needle valve. What's unique about that valve? It is, it's the step valve. All right, at idle position, at idle position, uh, idle, the idle needle, idle needle, regula valve regulates fuel. Because that uh, metering jet, that main metering jet, that we went from uh, D to C, the little jet there, that's more designed for full power. So this jet is too big to meter fuel at idle. There's just not enough flowing. It just, it's like it won't even recognize it. And then so we have to have something else that's even smaller. All right, so where was I here? Um, as throttle is open, the idle needle valve opens and does not regulate fuel. It's now larger than main metering jet. So, and we'll talk about the steps in just a little bit. So as throttle is opened, we'll say to full throttle. Um, idle needle, idle needle opens and does not regulate fuel and does not regulate. <coughs> what does regulate? The main, the main metering jet. Metering. The main metering jet. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's I was just thinking backwards on it, and so going back to where we just came from. All right. Fuel then flows from there to. Fuel flows next. What's the next main component? Next to discharge nozzle. Needle valve and then discharge nozzle. Discharge nozzle, needle, valve, and discharge nozzle. Which is past the idle needle valve, which is now open up here to the discharge nozzle needle valve and the discharge nozzle. All right, so that discharge valve is spring-loaded. Is spring-loaded. Spring-loaded with the diaphragm. Kind of interesting that the discharge needle valve looks very similar to the other stuff. But all right, so we're talking about this up here. It has a diaphragm and is spring loaded. A spring keeps the valve closed until proper pressure opens the valve. So spring uh, keeps valve keeps valve you know, valve closed. 
until proper fuel pressure. opens the valve. Remember, this is the valve. We don't want dribbling. When pressure decreases below the set value, so when fuel pressure decreases, below a set value, the valve closes quickly, or the valve closes, valve closes to allow fast and efficient cutoff. Efficient cutoff. No dribbles. It also maintains a constant pressure. Maintains a constant pressure in C. And impact air. So air, I'll put it air from A, which is what? Impact air is sent to nozzle, is sent to nozzle to emulsify fuel. Can you slow down for a second? Yep. Thanks for asking. You know, if you just brought your computer in and put it on text-to-speech, you could probably take a nap and it would hear everything I say and just type it in for you. Can you just send me the notes? <laughs> for a small fee? Yeah. Gift shop is that way. <laughs> An entire one? Sucker, I was twice what I needed. Three scan All right, everybody else good? That's good he asked. All right, mixture control system. Mixture control system. All right, remember the mixture control system is going to be this down here with that needle that is going to vent the two chambers. Uh, mixture control system allows air to bleed from chamber B suction to chamber A, reducing the pressure differential. So mixture control system allows air to bleed from B to A, reducing the air metering force. There, I just like combined a bunch of things here. I knew somebody was going to say that. <laughs> As I wrote it, I thought, oh, man. Um, technically, it would be from A to B. So I was following my notes here as I thought. I'll just go with it. It just shows what little you know, Tom. But I'll change it just, you know, just to keep you happy. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy boy. Nah, you're just wrong. But by the time I explained it, it would just be too much. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like electron flow. It's just easier to explain it backwards. All right, uh, see, I already did that. Oh, so it allows air to bleed, from bleed, reducing air meeting force, which would do what to the poppet? Right? This, uh, I don't say helps. This doesn't close it all the way, but closes the poppet a little. <laughs> Just super clear. All right. At ICO, what is ICO? 
Oh yeah, idle cut off. All right, that idle cut off. ICO. Uh, the mixture needle is the needle is pulled. The needle is pulled out. Equalizing, or at least trying to equalize, A and B. So that would be zero AMF, no, no air metering force. So you got no air metering force, it tends to close, close the poppet. But the poppet's not gonna close all the way because spring. there's a spring. So the ICO plunger depresses the idle spring. And closes the poppet. Can you show us again on the picture where the Right. One more time. There. So this cam is pulled out. Mm -hmm. That cam hits this lever right there, pushes this lever down. That lever pushes, there's a fulcrum right there that pushes that up. That plunger comes up and it pushes that little button, which is not attached to anything. It is floating. The pivot point is right there. So as you push this right there in, it will grab this and pull it in, which grabs this and pulls it in, which grabs this little poppet needle and locks it off. Okay. And again, this drawing is, I hate it because it, it really looks like this is the needle and that's the seat. And if I went to the right, it will close off, but it's not that way. The, the needle is right there and it actually kind of shows it sliding through, which mm, it's not, it's kind of the case, I guess, as it goes, it's just going to be the same size, so. Is that, is that needed like a reverse? Tapered? Yeah, ta tapered. No, tapered this way. Okay. Is the, uh, this way. <laughs> like, will y'all yeah, yeah. just stop it from I guess, yeah. slamming it all the way out? Yeah, of yeah that's kind of what it looked like to me. You'll see it, if you, when you look at the real one, we have a cutaway, and you'll look at it and go, yeah, there's a little, yeah, like retaining, yeah. pen. little yeah. retaining pen there. Like, well, <laughs> so you don't pull it out of the diaphragm? Apparently, <laughs> although it, you know. Probably hit right there. Yeah, I think it would too. It probably has a very, very important function that nobody knows about. Okay, uh, the mixture control system. That was it. All right, A, B, C, D. The AMC, which is the. Theater. I was thinking the same thing, so <laughs> you're good there. Going to the movies. Going to the movies, man. Automatic mixture control. A sealed bellows can be placed and be placed in line in line between A and B. One. So the bellows, it's a sealed bellows, um, has an inverse needle. Meaning that we have the bellows with a needle that starts small and that gets big. Terrible drawing, but that's inverse. As the atmospheric pressure decreases, what's the bellows going to do? Yeah. Wait a minute here. 12, I want up to right here, two. As atmospheric pressure, as atmospheric, atmospheric pressure, did you say spin? 
expand. Okay, it's spin. As atomic pressure um, decreases or temperature increases, the bellows expands. Bleeding air from A to B. And while we're there, we'll throw this in, which really more applies to the PR58 drawing. Um, a bellows can also be placed in the impact line, in the impact line to A. However, for this to work, for this to work, there must be actual airflow. There must be airflow from A to B at all times. Without flow, you can't just block off the passage and expect the pressure to change. Something's got to happen. So you got to have a flow. You got to have a flow, you got to have a bleed. So, um, a bleed can be created by a small hole in the diaphragm. Or a bleed line. Bleed line from A to B, like it's drawn in the PR58. Right there. Bleed line right there. What's the bleed line for right there? The little bleed? So the AMC works. So the AMC works. It creates airflow. Air Without it, the AMC, AMC doesn't, doesn't work. Is the air bleed really just like a small hole? Very small, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. A ruptured bellows will cause the mixture to become become rich at altitude. All right, let me know when you're caught up. All right, idle system. Um, idle fuel is provided by the idle fuel is provided by idle spring. By the idle spring holding pop it open. So it's going to hold the pop it open, but that may or may not, uh, that's probably going to give us a little bit too much fuel. So too much fuel is going to go into D, too much fuel is going to go through C, and too much fuel is going to go around, and it's going to hit what? The idle needle valve that has steps in it. So the correct amount of fuel amount of fuel 
is provided by the idle needle valve. I actually wrote here, the correct amount is provided by the amount of idle control, the correct amount is provided by the amount the idle control rod is mechanically opened by the throttle lever, which is just a confusing way because that's a horrible sentence to say that you have a mechanical rod that is linked directly to this valve right here. So this rod right here is directly controlled by the throttle lever. So you in the cockpit are just pushing the throttle in and out. That throttle in and out it moves this. It's connected directly over here to this and moves all of this, which pushes against the diaphragm and pulls back on the diaphragm. Uh, let's see, acceleration system. Acceleration. Um, uh, it's one, we have the diaphragm type. Diaphragm type. Let me see what figure I have here. Look, we can look at this picture. Black and white, not the best, but there it is. Diaphragm type. One side of the diaphragm is vented to manifold pressure, the other side contains metered fuel pressure. I don't love that slide at all. I like the colored one better. One side of the diaphragm is vented to manifold pressure. The other side contains metered fuel pressure. Is that correct for this one? Yep. yep. All right. Diaphragm type, one side, again, <laughs> one side. A diaphragm is vented to manifold pressure. The other side contains meter fuel pressure. To low pressure, low pressure in the manifold from from the closed throttle, from closed throttle causes vacuum on the air side of the diaphragm, causes a vacuum on the air side. And obviously fuel is on the other side, I already said that. Um, it causes a vacuum on the air side. Also it's pulling in, pulling in fuel to the fuel side. That's better. So that fills the Feels the fuel side like a syringe. Tell me when you're done. Good. All right. I don't have a whole lot more here. I think I condense a lot of this.
So three, when the throttle is opened, when throttle is opened, uh, higher manifold pressure, MAP, manifold absolute pressure, um, on diaphragm, plus spring pressure, pushes fuel out. Pushes fuel out toward discharge nozzle. G, the power enrichment system. It did, a little check valve to help fill it. I don't want to write everything. <laughs> My hand's getting tired now. Mm. So this is way more fun if I just rattle on and you write stuff. Right? Mm. <clears throat> All right, two types. One is the manually controlled power enrichment system. And you already know what this is. I just haven't called it that. Uses a double stepped idle needle or idle valve. So really we're just talking about the idle valve again, but now we're gonna call it the power enrichment system. So it uses a double step idle valve. This one. Look familiar? It's our idle needle. Combination idle and power enrichment valve. Uh, hmm. Could be. I can see it both ways. Because it's a restriction as it pulls out, then it allows it to go to full throttle. So, because then you would be putting it back into place. Yeah, to, to economize. economize. Uh, let's see, use a double step valve. So, step one. Step one controls fuel to 25% power. And that means that the idle needle is, so the idle needle. opening is smaller than a main metering jet. See, so idle needle at that point is smaller than main metering jet. So the idle needle is doing the metering, not the main metering jet. B, step two. Step two is 25% to 65%. Again, the needle opening is smaller than the main metering jet and needle regulates fuel. So at this time, so the needle regulates fuel. Fuel, not main metering jet. Number three, over. Over 65% power. The needle is open more, allowing more fuel to flow. So at this point, needle is pulled all the way out. So 65% power, needle is opened. Needle is opened uh, more, allowing more fuel to flow. Uh, needle is pulled back due to vent, so needle is pulled back. Uh, 
back and um, let's see this. What's on the back side of this? Uh, color. Venturi. Venturi suction. So as we go to higher power, is this going to be more or less? More suction or less suction? More suction. So we go all the way to full power. We get a lot of suction here. This is a, which is going to pull this back against this spring, causing the needle to open more. So let me see. Needle is pulled back. Let me see if I can ice write that. Needle is pulled back. Needle is pulled back. I'm not sure where I'm at on here. Uh, oh, there it is. Needle is pulled back due to Venturi suction. Due to Venturi suction on one side of the diaphragm on one side and fuel pressure on the other. Fuel pressure on the other. And the main metering jet now does the metering. Just call it MMJ. Main metering jet meters the fuel. So on this side, we do have fuel pressure. When the fuel pressure, I'll just assist, the, assist this in opening. I also have, I don't think I have a picture of this one, airflow power enrichment. Power enrichment. Uh, uses a spring loaded valve located parallel with the main metering jet. At higher power settings, Venturi air pressure and unmetered fuel pressure overcome spring and open passage to enrich mixture. So I'll just, uh, like I said, I don't think I have a picture of this one. Let me see. Airflow, I do, look at that. Airflow power enrichment. So in this particular case, we've got Venturi suction right there, very similar to the other one. It's almost the same thing, really, if you ask me. I'm having a hard time seeing the difference. But it's parallel. So you got the main metering jet. C is here. We've got Venturi suction here. When this opens, there it is. Right, right there. Yeah, I couldn't see the drawing. So parallel jets right there. Fuel is normally coming this way. And at higher power settings, you've got a passage right here just sitting there waiting to go. And when Venturi suction is enough, boom, pops that open. Fuel flows through here, joins this and out. So airflow power enrichment, let me see, uses a spring-loaded valve, uses a spring-loaded valve, located parallel, parallel with main metering jet. Yes, um, at high power settings, at power settings, Venturi suction, Venturi suction, let me see, um, Venturi suction overcomes, now let me see something here. Does that use, oh, it does. Okay, I was right. So let me take, Venturi suction, we'll get rid of that. Venturi suction and 
unmetered fuel pressure, venturi suction, and unmetered fuel pressure. Overcome spring tension. And open passage and open passage to enrich the mixture. And H, vapor vent system. What's vapor vent system do? Right, used to eliminate fuel vapors caused by the fuel pump, heat, and pressure drop across the popping valve. So, used to eliminate fuel vapors. Um, let's see. Condense this a little bit. One, two, uh, vapor vent. The PR58 um, has a float. This one has an orifice. It is a small orifice. Orifice um, that sends fuel. That sends fuel along with vapors. back to the tank. Yeah. My reading is that when the air bubbles start to go through there, you can have misses. So you're pumping air instead of fuel because you got to pump it through, and so you get a point where it's not spraying fuel, it's starting to create bu uh, air bubbles. So it doesn't like that, huh? Just like air in the Yeah, a little squishy. So it gets squishy. <laughs> in fact, I got a, I got a cool video to show you at break. A video. A video. All right, we'll finish this off, and. Uh, let me see, Bendix series, or say pressure carb, pressure carb designations. Um, all right, so we have all those numbers in there. We have the prefix, like the, the PR58 and the PS5. So let's throw these out there. So we have the PSDH, oh, there's I think a lot more. So P is uh, pressure operated. You know, like the PS5, the PR58. So there we go. S is single barrel. A barrel is like this is a single barrel. It's got one way for stuff to go through. Double barrel would have two of these. So the PS5 is a single barrel. PR58, it's not on, it doesn't, <laughs> the R is not up here. Um, that is rectangular. I didn't write that one. Uh, D, downdraft. Uh, H, horizontal, just some examples again. Should put R, yeah, I'm pretty sure R is rectangular uh, because the, uh, the openings on that. It's a double barrel rectangular. Um, I like this one. Dash number is the size, is the size in one quarter inch increments. So a dash one would be 
Um, all right, this doesn't make sense. That actually equals one inch. Let's see. Let's follow through. Um, stay, stay with me. Starting with a one. So two is uh, one and 1.25. Does that work? Yeah, starts. Okay, that would make sense. Starting, starting with one. Okay. Increment starting with one. Starting with one. There we go. Um, so a dash five would be. Well, I don't even think that's lining up well. Yeah, it should be two and a quarter. But this said, I'm getting this right out of the book, two inch. And a dash 10. I don't know, it's not on the test, don't worry about it. It's a 3.25. Who knows? That's the largest. Does it? How did yeah, it make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, so it's not 1 plus 5. So, so yeah, if we'd f played it all out, a dash 3 would be a 1.5. Yep. Dash 4 would be 1.75. Dash 5 is 2. They should have started with a 0. They really should have. I'm going to call them up and tell them. I'm not putting up with this. All right, there's sub models. I'm going to write that. B is airflow operated enrichment valve. C is manual operated. D is electric primer. F is fuel head enrichment valve. So then you could add a bunch of subsections to it and your little bolts on stuff. So, all right. <laughs>